اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از دا فرسٹ لیکچر اف دا ریکارڈڈ سیریز فار دی اکنامکس بزنس اکنامکس اینڈ آ ول بی اسٹارٹنگ کانٹنٹ لائک سو لیٹس سٹارٹ دا بک دیٹ ول بی فالوئنگ از میکانل برو دیٹس ہیر اف یو کین سی میکانل برو فلین on workers economics uh, pdf is available easily i'll be uploading this book or uh, to the class resources uh, the title of the book is economics principles problems and policies and uh, let's move to part number one of this book part number one of the book is introduction to the economics and the economy uh there are two chapters which are basically included in the section uh chapter number one limits alternatives and choice that's a basic building blocks regarding the economics and the economic system and chapter number two is the market system and the circular flow uh it's very important uh chapter number two because it works with a circular flow model which we basically use in the market system and market system is a very common system that's being utilized globally alternative one is the command system we'll be discussing all these things in detail uh, but uh, important things are chapter number one and chapter number two these are the building blocks so let's talk about chapter number one chapter number one is limits alternatives and choices and these are the learning objectives you have to go through all these things by yourself i'll be discussing the content of uh, the book directly so uh, <clears throat> The very first thing is what is economics and what are the different perspectives of the economists. Let's talk about the nature and method of the, uh, method of the economics first. Uh, what economics is and, uh, how, and what, on what principles it's based on and what are the different things uh, that work with this thing. So uh, people's economic wants are basically multitudinous and diverse. it's it's multi dimensional in nature by, by themselves so as far as uh, humans are concerned biologically they need only air water food clothing and shelter as in the old age stone age uh, but in contemporary whenever uh, after the um, 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 settlement of the humans in the societies the uh, society in society we also seek many goods and services associated with a comfortable or affluent standard of living uh fortunately society is being blessed with productive resources uh labor managerial talent tools machinery land and mineral deposits these are basically classified as economic resources we'll look into all these things in the coming sections uh that are used to uh these are basically the uh, uh productive resources that are basically being used to produce goods and services this production satisfies many of our economic wants and occurs through the organizational mechanism called the economic system or simply uh, the economy uh, like uh, if you talk about the economy of pakistan is being basically based on circular flow model uh, again uh, the circular flow model will be explained in in the sections that will follow uh, these section uh, follow these lectures uh, that will be in the following lectures uh the blunt reality however is uh, that our economic wants far exceed our productive capacity of our limited or scarce resources uh so the uh the complete satisfaction of the society's economic wants is basically impossible um, by nature this unyielding truth provides a definition of economics so uh, the economics is basically a social science by itself it is a social science and it's concerned with the if efficient uses efficient use of economic resources uh, that i have uh, mentioned uh, previously like labor managerial talent tools machinery land and mineral deposits and uh, the efficient use of these resources these scarce resources to achieve the maximum satisfaction of the economic wants that's the society requirements so that's a basic definition of the economics so let's talk about the scarcity and choice uh, so the economic perspectives uh, let's uh, read a few lines from this book economists review, uh, view things from a unique perspective this economic perspective or economic way of thinking has several and closely interrelated features so let's talk about the scarcity and choice whatever we have got uh, in the society and whatever we personally have is basically finite by nature it's not infinite whatever we consume that go uh, that whatever we consume is not repeatedly available until it's being produced again so 
is scarcity uh, the economic resources need to make uh, goods and services are limited in supply like if if you're going to uh, establish a factory uh, it would be one factory if if, if you are going to manufacture certain goods or service uh, from that specific thing so that would also be limited in nature there there won't be ab in abundance so uh, this is scarcity restricts options and demand source choices uh, but we can't have it all we must decide what we will have and what we must forego we have to choose what we have to consume and what we have to let go uh, so at the core of the economics is the idea that there is no freelance you may be treated uh, to lunch uh, making it free from your perspective but someone bears the cost uh, that's written in the, the in these lines uh, so uh, any resource anything that's being utilized or consumed there are two different things utilize means the, if if you're going if you're going to set up a factory for production uh, for, for the production line of uh, manufacturing a car then it is a utilizable resource you will you are going to basically use this resource repeatedly uh, for a certain period of time after that it depreciates and uh, it's being discarded but in pakistan uh, things are uh, uh, in a pretty different way uh, pakistan i think is the only country in which the cost uh, of the the vehicle appreciates i have never uh, heard such phenomena anywhere else in the globe so if you're going to um, start a plant regarding the manufacturing of the bread dawn bread let's talk about dawn bread so that's going to be consumed it's no more it it, it will no more be available for the for the usage or the consumption until you produce more but in the case of car uh, this thing is not applicable you are going to repeatedly use the thing you are not going to discard the car after the very first use so because all these sources are either privately or collectively owned by the members of the society ultimately society bears the cost so the concept is there is someone who bears the cost like uh, it was written in the previous few lines that if you are having a free lunch then it's not free someone has produced uh, the ingredients someone has baked the content and someone has paid for you so all these costs are basically applicable so it's not free there is someone in the society who bears the cost uh scarce uh, inputs of land equipment farm labor and a uh, labor of cooks and waiters and managerial talent are required because society could have used these sources to produ produce other things it sacrifices the other goods and services in making the lunch available whatever you have to do you have to sacrifice one thing to get the another thing another thing uh let's let's suppose you've got a specific area for la area of land and you want to set up a factory uh, area is limited in your ownership or someone owns that thing who wants to set up the factory that area is limited so just only one thing could be set up either the manufacturing factory for the car would be set up or the manufacturing factory for the bread would be set up so you have to choose which one you have to go for so if you want to have quick recovery then you will go uh, quick recovery and low scale investment then you'll go for the uh bread factory obviously uh, it would be a low uh, cost factory because uh it doesn't have those uh it doesn't have the requirement of those resources which are compulsory required for the production of the car so it would be on the lower side as far as the cost is concerned so if you talk about uh, uh, manufacturing a car you setting up a factory for that it would be heavy investment uh return is not guaranteed from the very first month because it will take time to produce car and it will take time to sell the car and all the cars would not be sold out immediately so it will take time but it will yield you more profit it can yield you more profit because uh if you're talk uh if you're talking about uh bread it's consumable and it is perishable good so if you produce the goods uh, the breads and you're not being able to sell it within the in the market within within a few within a few days let's suppose uh, a couple of days then it's going uh, it's going to be um, cost you around the actual cost of the bread that, that that would be on your part you have to pay for it because it would no more be usable uh, it would decay so these are some of the reasons you have to choice you have to go for a specific choice so econ economists call such sacrifices opportunity cost to m obtain more of one thing society forgoes the opportunity of getting the next thing and that should have been created with those resources the sacrifice is the opportunity cost of the choice 
Now, the next thing is basically is the rational behavior. Uh, rational behavior is also classified as purposeful behavior. That's written over here. Uh, rational behavior is basically a concept in which some people, in fact, an individual, make different choices under different circumstances. Uh, it simply it can be defined as uh, rational behavior means that individuals will make different choices under different circumstances. For example, if you're going uh, for a picnic and we have got, uh, let's suppose, 50 students who are participating in that thing and we are going towards the Hawks Bay, then we, we would prefer to have a stop in between uh, the way and we'll try to contact the factory or the wholesaler and get a bunch uh, purchase uh, from there. Um, instead of purchasing individual few cokes of, from, let's say, uh, from the corner store. It would be more feasible because it will save you certain money that you can utilize uh, somewhere else, like uh, like for the, for the rent of the bus, for the rent of the hut, etc. So, whereas if you're coming, um, let's suppose, to your home or let's suppose to your office or let's suppose to your university, and let's suppose it's May or it's June, then definitely you no, you you'd not go for such thing because you are an individual. You you don't have a bunch with you, and you you'll go just for a single coke, and you'll pay more for a single unit. A single unit in the bunch may cost you, let's suppose, um, um, fifteen rupees, whereas uh, in individual it may cost you twenty rupees. Let's suppose. So you are going to pay more to get a single drink. And whereas uh, if you're going uh, with a bus, uh, with uh, other colleagues, um, you're not going to purchase individually. You would prefer to have certain costs to be saved. Or some people call this behavior a selfish behavior, but, but I don't agree with this thing because uh, it's not selfishness, it's basically self-interest because um, um, if you're going to purchase uh, with more money for a single good for yourself that doesn't mean that uh, you have got selfish for yourself that simply means that you're going to pay more because the resource is not available in the wholesale price and if you are going for the let's suppose for the bunch purchase then definitely you are saving a cost certain few hundred or few thousand rupees and ultimately you are going to pay those those uh, the, that specific saved amount to another person in the society, let's suppose the driver, let's suppose the bus owner, let's suppose the hut owner. So that's not, in my in my view, it's not selfishness. Uh, it's basically the self-interest, that's a purposeful behavior. So let's read a few lines from here. Consumers are pers uh, purposeful in deciding what goods and services to buy. Business firms are pers purposeful in deciding what products to produce and how to produce them. Government entities are purposeful in deciding what public services to provide and how to finance them. Uh, people make different choices. If you're living, let's suppose, in, 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 in rural area, you'll not go for a, for a small car. You'll go for a big car because you have to tra travel long distances and the road is not that that good that that will make you comfortable so you, you have to go for uh let's suppose a larger scale a big car large car whereas if you are in city you'll prefer to have low cost a small car compact car which which will provide you the facility to <clears throat> travel in any part of the city with ease the smaller the, the car is the easy to uh, navigate within the city because because of the traffic conditions. So choices are different. Uh, let's uh, move to the next topics. And the second column is uh, not that much useful. Let's talk about marginal analysis. Marginal means additional, in addition to the previous. Uh, there are two different things that would be classified in the coming section, I hope. Uh, that would be marginal cost and marginal benefit. Uh, marginal analysis is based on the concept that if you are going to pay more for a certain thing, if you are going to utilize a resource that's not easily available, then you, you, you are definitely going to pay more. But would it be that much useful that satisfy your requirement in a much higher sense? If it is, then you are going to pay more. If it is not like that, then you're not going to pay more. So uh, the cost should be uh, greater than the benefit. 
the marginal cost must be greater than the marginal benefit otherwise it would not be useful uh, to go for it uh, so uh, the economic perspective focus largely on uh, marginal analysis uh, the comparison of the marginal benefits and marginal costs usually for decision making to economists marginal uh, yeah, i'm reading from this part of the book uh, marginal means extra addition or in change a change in most choices or decisions involve changes in the status quo meaning the existing state of affairs so we can use it like that way uh, marginal means extra additional or a change in uh, most choices or decisions involve changes in the status quo the existing state of affairs and um, for that basically you have to analyze what is coming in benefit and what is going in cost so in that way you can analyze certain situations whether it is useful or it is not useful so uh, this is basically uh, the highlighted portion the gray part is the fast food lines uh, basically uh, that's an example uh, that's showing uh, the uh, cost benefit uh, analysis uh, so what could be the example of uh, marginal benefits and marginal cost uh, <clears throat> let's let's take the example of pakistan uh, Pakistan have large scale external debts. Uh, Pakistan pe Baruni Karda Bahad. So these debts are basically um, um, heavy, um, so much heavy that much of the part of the GDP has been uh, spent in the previous times, even in the current times, for the payment of these loans. So should Pakistan go for the payment of these loans uh, so that more amount would be available in the future? Uh, or Pakistan should spend uh, amount for the defense uh, of the country. Uh, these are two choices because we don't have much resources. The resources are scarce, so we have to make a choice. We have to go for the defense or we have to go for the uh, external debts. So uh, what should we do? Um, in fact, Pakistan don't have a choice. Both of these things are very important. If Pakistan don't pay the debts, it's going to default. And if it's going to pay the debts completely, uh, it definitely it will be having future benefits. But currently, Pakistan cannot um, um, sustain uh, the neighboring country, which are ever ready to intermingle with the things. So uh, I'm talking about India. So if we are having such a neighbor, we cannot compromise on our defense. We have to spend on innovation. We have to spend on aircraft carriers. We have to spend on ships. We have to spend on some marines. We have to spend on uh, fighter jets, and we have to we have to invent something. We have to we have to curtail certain things so that we should be able to sustain the pressure that's being exerted by the neighboring country. So we don't have a choice. So this is marginal benefit, marginal cost. So should you spend extra on the payment of debts or should you uh, should you pay extra for the defense budget so in my view we should go for spending extra to the defense budget so that we should have upper hand uh, that's basically uh, the analysis of marginal benefit and marginal costs so cost is marginal uh, we are going to spend more on the defense and definitely will be uh, will be going to have more benefits like we are having our own fighter aircraft jf-17 and that's on the positive side but it has further certain things that needs to be implemented in it and that's the stealth factor so if you're going for it we have we have to spend more and definitely it's going to pay for us uh Okay, uh, so let's talk about, uh, uh, we are having theories, principles, and models. So uh, before uh, we go, so let's discuss this thing. And, and I've got certain other things in my mind which I want to discuss, but uh, let's discuss the sequence first. Uh, uh, the theories, principles, and models of the economics. Um, in the modern age, uh, we definitely have uh, scientific reasons for everything. Uh, we go for the research, we go for the observation, we take out the data set, and then we go for the walking over the data set. So um, like all of the physical sciences, uh, the economics, um, 
uh, economics by itself is a social science, but like all other physical and life sciences, it's basically based on scientific methods. Uh, there are several items which are basically uh, part of the thing, uh, the, the scientific methodology of the economics. Uh, these points are based on bullet points. Uh, and these are available here. I've got a call, excuse me for a while. Uh, so what I was talking about, uh, yes, uh, I was talking about the scientific methodology that economics is based upon. Uh, it's a sequential process. Uh, um, the very first thing that we need to do is to observe uh, the data from the real world or the surroundings. Uh, so we basically are observing the real world behavior and the outcomes. Uh, even A has been, uh, even A has occurred, so what would be the uh, so observing uh, the real world, uh, by, by observing the real world, we get the data content, uh, uh, pre and post event data, like something, if, if, if something is happening, what was the prime reason for that thing? Uh, what was the prime reason for that, that, that caused that thing to happen? And what are the post uh, effects uh, after the event? So these are based on the observations. So based on those observations, uh, we then formulate uh, explanation of cause and effect, uh, the hypothesis, uh, the thing that I've said, the pre and post effects of the observation. So in the third phase, we go for testing this explanation by comparing the outcomes of the specific events to the outcomes predicted by the hypothesis. Let's suppose the hypothesis says that event A is uh, the cause of event X. And if X happens, then always A will be the output. So if uh, we have created this hypothesis and repeatedly we have uh, observed the same after this event. So that simply means that the causation is there. Otherwise it's not there. That means the hypothesis is not correct. So based on these justification, we are basically accepting, rejecting and modifying the hypothesis. So uh, the pre and post conditions, uh, the pre and post events uh, that are associated with certain event, the after comparing the results, we can say that it is associated or it is not associated. And on the basis of that, we either accept or reject and so on and so forth. Uh, then um, after this thing, we go for the second phase. The second phase is iterate. Uh, iterate means test the hypothesis again with the same type of event, not the same event, but the same type of event. So we are going to continually test uh, the hypothesis again, the facts, if the favorable results accumulate, the hypothesis evolves into a theory. Yes, uh, after repeatedly test, if A happens after X and A, let's suppose after, after paying the debts, uh, external debts of the Pakistan, definitely Pakistan is, uh, um, is, getting, uh, is getting a more free economy than, uh, on the other hand, we do have uh, a scarce, um, what we what we, we call it, uh, uh, foreign reserves. Our foreign reserves decrease after the payment of the debt. So if A is payment and X is the foreign reserves, so foreign reserves deplete after the payment. And it happens every time. So if uh, this type of thing, keeps on posting, uh, then we can say that we are we are evolving a economic theory. A very well tested and uh, widely accepted theory is referred to as economic law or economic principle. And uh, uh, these are basically uh, formulated as uh, uh, theoretical economics and policy economics. There are two different things. Uh, Policy economics is based on a specific theory. We go for a specific policy. A uh, foreign um, um, foreign ministry or we, we, what we call uh, uh, the foreign policy of Pakistan is based on the economic conditions plus our ties with our neighbors plus our foreign reserves. So all these things are basically connected together. So if if we are if you are basing uh, if you have based ourselves on a specific theory, uh, the policy. Uh, we make a specific policy based on a specific economic theory. Like uh, in economics, resources are always scarce. So if we are going to spend any of our resources, like I've said, uh, of foreign reserves, uh, then definitely uh, cost benefit ratio plus uh, benefit of choice, uh, marginal cost, marginal benefit, 
and uh, for the uh, what we can say uh, marginalism and before that we have a uh, rational behavior and initially we have got a scarce resources so uh, the, these topics are bas basically covered being today uh, based on these things uh, based on specific theory that because of the scarce resources we have to make a choice either we can go for the payment of the debt or we can go for the settlement of uh, let's suppose uh, another portion in our economy uh, let's suppose we can we can build our economy uh, we can uh, we can invest uh, in capital resources uh, which are going to pay in the future uh, in the next cycle let's suppose we are we are going to build an economic zone and in that economic zone we are going to provide resources to our entrepreneurs so that they can build their factories and in return the entrepreneurs will run the business and ultimately they'll pay to the economy so this is basic uh, this is a basic theory the of scarce resources so based on this theory uh, if we uh, uh, if we create a policy that uh, we want to attract the foreign uh, investors we provide them initiative uh, we provide them the facilities we provide them the specific area we provide them the economic zone that come and build uh, build with us so that's because of the uh, specific theoretical economic concept uh, so that policy that increase the uh, uh, input in the economy uh, that's basically based on theoretical economic principle so uh, the policy will evolve and ultimately uh, the the benefit will come uh, to the country and uh, uh, the basic concept of discussing this thing is uh, that policy economics is based on theory and in this phase i'm talking about theoretical economics so and um, this theory is basically based on certain facts and observations repeated iterations and acceptance rejectance uh, acceptance rejecting or um, what we can say uh, modification of the hypothesis all these things are basically uh, part of the theoretical economics so uh, whenever we are going to evaluate certain things we have to uh, focus that we have to make certain things equal uh, we have to go for the generalizations we have to keep all other things constant so uh, let's talk about um, uh, other things equal. Um, it should be listed uh, some, yes, it is here. It's here. Uh, um, that's on uh, my mouse pointer, this one, generalizations. And other things equal assumptions. Whenever you are going to test any hypothesis, you have to keep all of the things constant. Uh, and we call it citrus paribus. Uh, the concept is based on, uh, uh, let's take an example. Uh, Volkswagen was a was a market hit. Volkswagen is one of the largest manufacturer of vehicles around the globe in the previous times. Uh, I don't know what the current position is, but it was uh, a very high quality product like Mercedes. It's a Japan based firm. Uh, it's a Germany based firm, and uh, they were producing quality cars and uh, Foxy uh, that we usually see uh, in is basically the product of Volkswagen. Uh, the, this specific car, the Foxy, was basically made for the European environment because the temperatures are usually uh, negative in Europe and uh, many of the things are basically observed there. And uh, whenever the car was tested, it was tested in accordance with the temperature of the Europe because Germany is in Europe and uh, the manufacturer focus is on its initial local sales and then it, uh, it was focusing on the global uh, sales so initially it tested the vehicle within the country and vehicle was a perfect hit um, it sold out many hundred units uh, at that time many hundred units was a big deal so uh, company started growing and then it started uh, to export the cars to different parts of the world when it came to pakistan uh, people uh, purchased the car and it was a failure in Pakistan. That car was not accepted in Pakistan. And what was the reason? The reason was very simple. Uh, the car, uh, the engine that was placed in the car was not having any radiator or the heat sink. In Pakistan, we don't have negative temperatures around the year. Uh, we have uh, negative temperature in certain parts of the country uh, for a certain period of time, a few months. But after that, we have got a hot season, 30 degree, 40 degree, even uh, there are parts of the country where 45 degree the, the Celsius is, is, is not a big deal. So when the car was tested in Pakistan, it was a failure. And why it was that? 
it was because all other variables were not the same the environmental temperature environmental temperature was not negative it was uh, on the high end and the engine that was used in the car was not being able to exhaust the heat of the engine to the environment because the environment was already hot so uh, because of that the engine got failed and ultimately the car got failed and ultimately uh, the company produced a new version and uh, they placed a radiator in that for the heat sink so same is the concept that's applicable for the economics uh, whenever you are going to evaluate the resources within the within the economy or the country you have to make all other things equal uh, you have to place uh, uh, the measurement control at the equal levels so if this is the case uh, then your evaluations will be on the positive side otherwise um, nothing is going to be evaluated um, in the positive dimension uh, the point that i missed was generalizations uh, this one um we have to generalize the economic principles because what's applicable for a certain company or a certain group of people or or even an individual that's not uh, true for everyone so we have to go for the generalizations uh because none of the two firms behave in the same way uh, uh let's talk about the, i visited um, um visited the market uh, in the previous uh, week for purchase of a laptop uh went uh, to uh, what we call it uh, uni plaza or your techno city whatever it is so searched over there and then i came to realize that there are certain few uh, persons uh, who are doing all these things at a larger scale i visited their shop and just asked what are the success uh, what are the reasons of their success in this uh, in this pandemic uh, when the other persons within the same market are not being able to sell up you are having a good sales the person simply replied whenever the people were sleeping and enjoying the lockdown i was on my toes and i was importing because that was uh, the last time the shipments were being made from different parts of the world to pakistan and after that the shipments stopped and even government of pakistan has placed certain taxes and so on and so forth whatever the things are and the things are not coming from the back down so easily it takes time and uh, the content that's required in the market is not available with everyone and uh, the content that's available for sale with other shopkeepers uh, they have purchased at a higher price whereas i have purchased approximately few months back uh, before february so i've got a competitive price so i can sell at a low rates so people are buying from me so we have to generalize uh, during the pandemic the economy has shrunk or economy has expanded so as far as a single shop owner is concerned for that shop owner the things expanded but for the others the things got shrinked so we have to generalize the economic principles and theories and facts so for that we have go we have to go for the generalizations uh, so uh, the example that's written over here is uh, economists say that the consumers buy more of a particular product when its price falls uh the economists recognize that some consumers may increase their purchase by a large amount others by a small amount and few not at all the price quantity principle however holds for the typical consumer and for a consumer's group uh the basic uh, this basic example uh, is based on the concept that uh, there is an income uh income factor within the group uh, it will be discussed in either chapter number 3 or 5 or 4 uh, i don't remember which uh, actual chapter it is but there is a uh, there is a purchasing power there is a term purchasing power and that's associated with the income and that income is basically included in calculation of the gdp gross domestic product so keep it simple uh, let's keep it simple uh, so whenever the price falls for anything most of the people uh, they go for buying in bulk that it's available in cheap price today it might not be available in cheap price tomorrow so let's buy it so obviously the demand increases and whenever the demand increases there is a inverse effect whenever the demand increases the price increases so we have to go for the generalization we have to generalize that that if a certain product will will uh, a certain type of product or a specific product uh, decrease the price the overall sales will increase and ultimately the product will get short from the market and whenever the product will get short from the market the seller uh, if the seller has a background stock then the seller has the ability to make it higher than the previous price let's suppose it was previously uh, being sold out at 10 rupees and, uh, they have decreased the price to 7 rupees or 6 rupees or even 5 rupees 
the entire of the stock or the lot has been sold out like uh, all those products which are going to expire in the near time uh, they are being uh, placed at a cheaper price uh, at the uh, near the point of sales of any large shop so the people utilize the concept of uh, go cheap and sell it out uh, this, um, instead of uh, throwing it away after expiry so those sort of products are basically sold out uh, very easily and at cheaper price but uh, the output uh, the output of the thing is that that specific product if sold out from the store it's not a, it's it's no more available at the store so what they do they they acquire the same product more and they increase the price so we have to go for the generalization that's the basic concept of discussion at this point uh, then comes the graphical expression again uh, uh, again i've got a call uh, this graphical expression is not that much important but because it simply says that um, a picture or a snap or a graph is basically explaining more things like if we have got this increasing trend that simply shows that uh, for a specific period of time the price of the product is on the higher side and sales on the higher side so we can define a single line into few hundred words so that's what uh, it usually says uh, another important thing that i need to mention i think it's it should be there uh, but it's not listed there uh, that's abstractions uh, that's related to this topic uh, uh, the uh, theory principles and models uh, abstractions are basically economic principles or theories uh, needs to be get abstracted means uh, irrelevant details should be removed from those things because uh, there are many things that you observe during uh, uh, the first phase uh, of uh, that's mentioned over here observing the real world behavior so and so forth and while observing the real world behavior and outcomes you basically uh, record everything and when you record everything there are certain irrelevant details that that come come in the data set and that's not useful so so you have to simplify the data set you have to uh, you have to remove the irrelevant content from the sets so uh, that simplification that omit the irrelevant facts and circumstances uh, is basically the concept of abstractions uh, economic models uh, do not mirror the full complexity of the real world that's the basic concept behind the abstractions Uh, after abstractions, uh, let's see what's the next column is microeconomics and macroeconomics. Uh, before going to this micro and macroeconomics, uh, I would like to uh, to define certain things regarding the policy economics. Uh, policy economics is basically formulated for a specific part or a specific time or a specific region. And uh, that recognizes the theories and data can be used to formulate policies. The basic concept is utilize the existing theory theoretical economics to formulate a specific policy by means of which you can attain certain outcomes that's supposed to be the economic goals uh, that's not listed in this chapter i think um, but uh, you have to consult any in the book or you can or you can listen to this uh, recording uh, so the basic economic goals are basically listed as uh, there are a few things that we need to consider for uh, for growth the very first thing is economic growth if you're going to produce more uh, and better goods and service uh, the most um, or more simply uh, you develop a higher standard of living or higher standard for the society uh, that will be uh, classified as economic growth economic growth is basically to provide more and more to the economy so that economy will perform better and you have to uh, you have to have more in the future if you if you invest more in the uh, if you invest more in the um, uh, uh, capital goods, then the economy is going to produce more in the future. Like uh, like in the previous uh, uh, few minutes back, I have told that if you go for the economic zone, creation of economic zone within the country, that economic zone is going to pay out in the future. Not today. Uh, it's a cost for today, but it's a benefit for tomorrow. Uh, then uh, the other uh, uh, objective uh, or, or the goal of the economic is, is the full employment. Full employment is again um, a thing that we need to consider. Uh, full employment doesn't mean that everyone who is living in the country should be having a specific job uh, because there are two, three things that we need to clarify. The very first thing is the ability and the second thing is willingness. Everyone who's living in the country is not willing to work for someone. There are certain people who are who are independently uh, working, or, or, or you can say that they want to own a business rather than working for uh, someone else. So, so they are not willing. 
Uh, whereas there are other certain people who are in the country who are not being able to do work, like like disabled uh, or the elderly or the younger ones. Uh, those are not included in the workforce of the uh, of the country. So full employment means all of those who are able and willing to work for the country. Uh, they they should be having a specific job, and that's one of the economic goals. Uh, that, then we are having economic efficiency. Uh, the basic concept is based on the uh, based on the fact that achieve the maximum fulfillment of wants. Uh, wants are always on the increasing side, and the resources are always on the lower side. They are scarce. And uh, the basic uh, economic efficiency concept is based on the fact that achieve the maximum fulfillment of wants using the available productive resources, and they are always scarce. So, next one uh, on the economic goals, uh, what we can say, uh, price level stability. Uh, there should be no price swings. High. There should be no price. No high price swings, like. Uh, if there is an upswing in the currency, let's suppose if, if, if you are going to increase the petrol prices uh, or the diesel prices within the country, it's going to affect everything. Even uh, 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 even uh, the fruits and vegetables, they are going to be increased because of the fact that the transportation char charges increases. So uh, the basic economic goal uh, regarding price stability is to avoid large upswings and downswings in the general price level. Uh, that is avoid inflation and deflation. Inflation is hike in prices and deflation is decrease in prices. Another economic goal could be uh, economic freedom. Uh, um, you have to take down, you have to note down these points uh, by yourself because I think uh, they are not listed in the current chapter not, or not even in the next section. So you have to write it down. So economic freedom uh, guarantees that businesses and workers and consumers have a high degree of freedom in their economic activities. Anyone who is able to uh, able to work uh, is uh, free to work for anyone. If uh, if the person doesn't like a specific business or a or owner or a specific industry, then the person can leave the industry. Then the person can switch over to another business. Uh, uh, or uh, the same is applicable for the uh, this one I was talking regarding the labor or the workers. Uh, same is applicable with the consumers and same is applicable with the owners of the business as well. So if you are, let's suppose you are going to purchase something, let's suppose if you are not uh, satisfied with the Honda cars, then you have uh, you have an alternative in Pakistan, you, you can go for the Toyota car. So uh, that was from the consumer's perspective and from the business perspective, if let's suppose if you're working in a specific industry and that industry is not uh, providing you your, your desired results or the cost benefit ratio is not good that much that you are willing to switch, then you can switch to another business. Like service uh, was providing previously only shoes in Pakistan. Now the service has diversified its business and service is now providing service service ties as well. Uh, what uh, else could be the economic goals? Um, like uh, we could further have equitable distribution of income. Uh, ensure that no group of citizens faces poverty while the most others enjoy the abundance. Uh, you can simply, in the simpler words, you can say that uh, if a certain group in the country uh, have uh, capital resources that could generate funds. So uh, if the owner keep on generating the funds and not and that not being distributed uh, evenly in the society, then uh, the richer uh, the rich one will get more richer and the poor will get more poorer, and that should not be the case. So the government uh, take care of these things. Uh, in Pakistan, we don't have a, a very stable and uh, uh, excellent sort of system. Uh, but in in Europe, in America, they keep all these things uh, in check and balance, in a strict check and balance. And then comes uh, uh, economic goals. Uh, the next one could be economic security. Uh, that's to provide the re provide the resources to those who are chronically ill, disabled, laid off, aged or otherwise unable to earn minimal levels of income. That could be the younger ones um, who don't have uh, uh, any, any anyone to supervise them or anyone to mentor them. So economic security means simply means that uh, like uh, the, the basic uh, resources, like uh, uh, you, you should have be you should be having a specific shelter. You should be having a, a specific uh, set of food for for three times and so on and so forth. These are the basic economic requirements. And economic security means that the government or who are the responsible uh, institution is within the a specific area, they should provide this thing. So this is again a uh, uh, goal of the uh, specific policy of the economics. Then uh, 
I think uh, many of the points have already been discussed. Uh, let's make it the last one. Uh, balance of trade. Uh, seek a notable overall balance with the rest of the world in international trade and financial transactions. If you're going to import more, if you're, if you're going to export less, ultimately the resources within the country, they are going to deplete. And this should not be the case. Uh, you have to, you have to, uh, um, you have to make balance in trade. Uh, if you are, if you're like in Pakistan, in being a Pakistani, we eat more. So we import edible oils uh, in billions of dollars. Yes, billions of dollars. We we import billions of dollars of oil each year, and uh, we. And that's basically a cost. And those billions of dollars are being extracted within the economy and they are being shifted to someone else outside the country. And if you're not going to export something uh, from the country that could yield you the foreign currency or the foreign reserves, then ultimately the internal resources are, will, going, uh, will, will get depleted. And this is not good. So economic goal is to balance, create a balance in the trade. Imports and exports should be um either uh, add balance plus there should be no plus there should be no minus that's a square of position or the good position is you should be having more exports than imports so that would be on the more positive side so these are basically the economic goals which are basically the concept of the policy economics uh so what is uh, the concept of the po policy economics is to create a formula is to create or formulate a policy uh from the existing theoretical economics but what was the concept of creating such thing and what are the steps that should be carried out uh, are there two three simple steps uh, for creating a policy uh, regarding the economy or the policy economics uh, the very first part is to state a goal what you need to do uh, like in the previous uh, few minutes i have mentioned like uh, economic growth like full employment like economic efficiency price level stability these are some of the goals economic goals so state a goal if you mention all these things, then you have to go for choice. Um, price level stability and economic efficiency. You have to trade off between the goals. Uh, then uh, after stating the goal, uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking about economic policy, how to create. Number one is state the goal. Number two is determine the policy options. What could be the options? And how you're going to trade, uh, trade off, uh, which one to opt for and which one to forego. For, for the next uh, iteration.